Okay, this is just a short video of a stand that I made for my wife Sharon's uh, German braided rug loom. This particular loom is 24 inches wide and about 43 and a half inches high. However, the rods stick out another inch and three eighths. So when you figure where the center pivot will be for a hinge, you have to take the overall length of the wooden part of the frame plus this into account and divide by two to get the pivoting center for the uh, uh, loom on the rack. Now for this one, the pivots I made uh, very simple out of uh, four inch long pieces of roughly four inch pieces of roughly inch by inch and a half hardwood and to make it really simple for me I just used a piece of 5 16 uh, diameter rod that is about 26 inches long and so for the hinge all I actually did was to uh, put the two halves together and then uh, drill a hole out that was one thirty-second of an inch less than five-eighths of an inch. Maybe that sounds confusing, but uh, the idea is so that if you'll notice here, I've got two screws holding that hinge in place and this isn't quite all the way drawn up here because we're pressing on this uh, rod because half of five-eighths is a sixty-fourth less than uh, than the thickness of that rod so it creates a little bit of pressure there so the rod stays in place that's all that's for now this particular frame was broken uh, uh, someone else made it and they did a poor job they picked a piece of of lumber that had a uh, big knot in it right here and so uh, I have a piece of aluminum that I put on here many years ago to bridge that gap okay so that's why that looks like that but the two hinges again are identical okay so that's the hinges now for the other dimensions if you notice here the whole loom is sitting about an inch above this board and so I, I size these vertical members here uh, to make that happen just right okay we'll get to that in a minute okay as I said previously the loom is 24 inches wide so the uprights are roughly one inch material by inch and a half and they are 28 inches long 28 inches long and that hole that you see is one inch centered one inch from the end and centered on that piece of inch by inch and a half stock. The bottom board or spreader as you might call it is again that one inch material and it's about four inches tall. In my case the board is about 26 and one quarter inches long. So that's the 24 inch width of the loom plus two times the width of this. So if your wood is any thicker or thinner you'll have to make adjustments. The point is that you want the tops of these guys to be at just a tiny bit over 24 inches apart when all is said and done. And you can see that there's a little like a quarter of an inch maybe three-eighths there. My boards were not perfectly straight. They're bowed a little bit and no big deal this was just to be a prototype. Finally, the feet are made out of, uh, again, inch, maybe 15 16 thick stock. That is about two and an eighth inches thick. Could be anything. I, I wouldn't make it narrower than two inches, but it could be four inches. The plans that I looked at to get ideas didn't show how things were put together. So it would have been easy to screw the leg onto the spreader by going through the uh, 
uh, end grain, but that's not a very strong process. So instead, I chose to screw these guys to the sides of the legs so they would hold better. And also, also I screwed the spreader to the uprights with two screws. And those are both number 10 uh, wood screws that are uh, at least an inch and a half long. They're as long as they could be without actually poking their noses through. Just maybe to repeat a little bit, you can see that that hinge, although it's tightened up, uh, there's a little gap at the top which provides tension, which provides tension on this rod so that the rod stays still and doesn't slide to the left or the right as you turn the frame over. Same thing on this side. The gap isn't as big, but that's only because this side has this this side has this aluminum here and there's a little less give in that part of the process. So backing off again, here's kind of the back side. Here's the front side. And again, that's showing the loops for the rods in the down position. So now if I turn the loom over, which you would be doing if you are uh, working one half and then the other, all right, uh, that's what it looks like in that position. And so if we look at that in the best lit situation, kind of from the ground, we can see the, the gap. So there's no bumping into things in either orientation. Okay, there you can see the whole machine from the backside. Thank you for watching.